Hi everyone, happy Saturday. So um, for some of these where I'm using like mixed media or I'm doing a technique and um, where I might speed it up and do a voiceover or whatever, I got to thinking it might be a good idea to talk a little bit before the video starts just to show you guys like what I'm using. Um, and I'll talk about it some during the voiceover as well, but just to specifically show you what I'm using, just in case you can't catch it during the actual video. So if you watch Tuesday's tag video, um, I was using these for the background. Um, these are Faber Castell Gelatos. They are basically water soluble crowns. Um, and there's all kinds of different sets. When I was taking art lessons with my art teacher, this was one of the things that she just absolutely loved um, for mixed media work. And uh, so I took her advice and I bought a set or two. I wasn't really using them and was collecting them more, but now I'm getting to where I'm actually using them. So um, Tuesday, I use these dry. You can use them a lot of different ways. You don't have to necessarily activate them with water. Um, the way I use them Tuesday, if you didn't watch the video, and I'll put, I mean, you can you can go back at my channel and look. I don't have to put a link for you. I actually took um, one of the gelatos and used it dry with a stencil um, overlay on the background to create this texture. You know, ignore my weird stencil work right there. But they worked really well, and this was Amazon paper, and this was actually over wax crayon, so I had to use a little more than I thought I would, but it actually turned out really nice and I'm going to use them again like that. So, um, and you can use a stencil brush which is what I used on for that picture. I might, the video has the link to the stencil brushes that I used. So, but for today's video um, I'm actually going to use these wet. Um, instead of putting them directly on the paper and activating them though, I'm going to use a palette as you see because um, I'm recording this after the fact. So I snapped up this Karen Dash palette. Um, it has kind of a textured side which is the side I use mostly and then it does have a smooth side um, like a glossy side if you need it. Um, and so what the way I'm using them today is I'm scribbling them on the palette and then I'm also using a water brush and I use usually use these Arteza water brushes which of course you can use just a regular wa watercolor brush and a cup of water um, but then I'm just rubbing them on the palette to activate and then actually painting it onto the picture to get that effect you can also scribble them on the paper and activate them that way. I've done that before. The Galaxy Fox picture I did, I think back in February, was one I did with Kirby Rosanna's. That worked very well. Um, and then you can also take them straight off the crown. And um, the the different methods I try I tried for this picture, this gave me the least amount of mess up because <laughs> this is my first time coloring in this book. And this is my first time using the palette like this. So um, so yeah, that's gonna be the big thing is just I kind of wanted to show you guys how I use these on the palette. I liked um, how I did that. I did not pre-treat the paper. So this is the book. And you'll see that again in a minute. I did not pre-treat the paper in this. And um, this paper is so nice that um, as long as I worked quickly, it wasn't an issue. Um, but I think in the future, I would like to use a satin glazing liquid or something. And I'll explain why in the video. But um, so you'll see me use these in a quote wet format today. Also use some Tombow dual brush pens. I think that's what these are actually called, um, which yes I own and you never see, but um, alcohol marker will bleed through as it's double sided. I did some tests with these and as long as I don't blend and I just straight color with them, they don't bleed through. So um, yeah, again on untreated paper and then also the same with the gel pens. Um, I used mostly, I think I just used the dual metallics again. I don't think I used anything else. 
I was going to use regular glitter gel pens, but the ones I had actually bled through more than these did. So, on the test page that I tried, so who knows. But anyway, um, yes, yeah, so the biggest part of this is going to be the background. That's what I spent the most time on, and then the rest of it was just kind of straight coloring. But you still get a really awesome result. So, Hope you guys enjoy this type of intro. Let me know in the comments um, when I do mixed media pictures in the future or things like using certain techniques like this. If you like to see me kind of give a quick rundown of what I'm using before the video, like I said, if you like this little clip, let me know in the comments. So let's get to the video. All right. So. Um, this is for a buddy color. Everybody say hello to Sid. We picked this picture out of Botanicum, which is going to be my... F <laughs> Sid thought she'd come by at least tell you guys hi, and then, <laughs> then she had the good sense to go on. <laughs> Alright, so um, I'm doing this as a buddy color with uh, another Michelle. Um, She's ML Kim 70 I think, on Instagram. We decided, like I said, to do this picture in Botanicum. Um, this is my first page out of this book. This is also my first uh, Maria Trolle picture. So, <laughs> I was rather nervous. And, of course, being nervous, um, instead of going, picking something fairly easy, I had to make things more complicated. Because we all know that's how, how I roll when I get nervous about pages. Um, there we go. That's a little better. Alright, so in the in in the pregame <laughs> video, you saw um, how I uh, showed putting, and, and you saw just a moment ago how I put the uh, colors on the palette. And uh, the colors I am using, and of course I'll put all this in the description. The colors I'm using are actually from the Iridescent 2. It, or it says Iridescence, but I believe it's the Iridescent 2 uh, 1. And because there's a, there's a 1 and there's a 2. And um, I used Canary Diamond, Amethyst, Tanzanite, and Rose Quartz. And um, I believe these were all from the um, set that Tammy gifted me last month, I think, um, or the month before. But anyway, thank you, Tammy. Using the iridescence actually gives you a really cool finish. Um, I, I tested this <laughs> on a scrap page of cardstock before I did this picture. <laughs> and... Um, I love the background. It's not, and you'll see it at the end, it's not super, it's not shiny, it's not glittery, glittery. It, it's just got a shimmer to it. So um, I absolutely love the finish on these. It does make coloring over them a little bit, a little bit difficult. Um, if, you know, you're kind of messy like me and I was trying very hard not to color the leaves and then at the end I get kind of impatient and I'm like, oh, I'm going to go over them anyway, especially if you're going over them with gel pen. <laughs> I was really pleased with this picture still until I started putting the gel pen on it, and then I started getting mad. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, so we are starting with the darkest color right now, which is the Tanzanite. And I know this is kind of like the way these are laying down, they're kind of pastel -y colors, and, and I, I know, I know a pastel -y colored picture. Um, the, uh, the other buddy color I posted on Instagram this week from um, A Million Owls, which I need to start putting those on the community page as well, like the, the pictures like that, but um, I used Arteza watercolor pencils and Milky Pop pens, and it had kind of a pastel -y look to it and I know right like you know we're we're known around these parts for big bold vibrant colors and here I am putting out pastels um in these last two pictures good 
gracious. You know, I was looking, I remember looking at my hands earlier yesterday and thinking, oh, finally, all the weird scratches and stuff on my hand from Leroy and crashing in the stuff, not crashing in the stuff. Um, that just makes me sound like I'm just flailing around the house. Um, I'm not that, I'm not that bad. Um, the second color, by the way, is um, the amethyst which gives you that kind of purpley pink color um oh and in terms of how I approach this picture I was like the easiest way for me to do this because I did not pre-treat the paper so I figured I, I was not familiar at all with how the paper was going to do how quickly it was going to dry whether I was going to be able to mix these colors well as I transitioned or not um, I figured I would work on both sides where the limbs are um, because there's a lot of little spaces like this and I can easily transition, you know, I actually have little notches, you can barely see them on the left side of the paper showing where I need to transition to the next color because I'll get so absorbed I'll forget and then I'll go halfway down the page and be like, oh shoot, I should have already went to the other color. So, um, I do both sides with the limbs because they give me easy areas to color and then not have to worry about blending too much. And so what you'll see is me coloring the left side. Then we're going to jump to me coloring the middle because I, I was trying to cut down the length of this. Um, mostly wanted to feature using the gelatos themselves. Um, so, uh, you know, I cut out certain parts of the picture where I'm just kind of showing you how I got started and then you'll see the finished product. But um, I wanted, I don't know, I wasn't in a mood to talk for an hour today. <laughs> and I know there's so many other videos out there with, you know, from awesome people here on YouTube and everybody only has limited time. So I thought, let's try a little bit shorter video today. So here I am moving on to the rose quartz and um, the rose quartz and canary diamond I definitely had to use more of to get more color um, I guess because they were a little bit lighter. The other ones seem to go farther just because they have a darker color to them. I'll move the camera in a minute. I'm sorry guys. Yeah, I learned my lesson down there about being more careful around painting around or coloring, painting, whatever you're calling this, whatever we're calling this today, painting around stuff like, like I said, I'd get some on the leaves and just be like, eh, whatever. And yeah, I learned my lesson on that one. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so then here's the canary diamond and, uh. It, it looks weird at first when it goes on. It looks a lot darker, um, but then as it dries, it, it kind of gets that more yellow gold kind of glow to it. So, but yeah, I know pastels, right? Like, I'm sure some of you are just, you know, please sit down. Don't, don't fall over and faint on my account. Hurt yourself. <laughs> well, when we picked this picture... I, I had, well, I was going to say real quick, I had to go back and scribble with the crayons quite a bit. Um, I used, I used a fair amount, um, not a ton. I did not, you know, I thought these things went down the entire barrel, but now that I'm looking at the ones that I colored with, it doesn't really look that way, does it? Because I know I didn't use that much. So yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Of course, they make the barrel opaque, so really up until you start using it. Oh, wait, there it is. Yeah, that barrel's only like halfway filled from the looks of it. I could be wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong, but looking closely at these barrels, these are only about halfway filled. Well, that's a waste of space. Waste of space and false advertising, but <laughs> gelatos are not cheap. <laughs> 
Um, now granted, I didn't use a whole ton here. I mean, I barely had to like use a little screw thing on the bottom to get more crayon. So, I mean, you know, they'll probably last for a while, but it's still kind of like, why do, why do companies do that? Like, for real, I love your product. You don't have to, you don't have to lie to me. Like, if I like your product, I like your product. So here you can see me actually having to transition between the colors, which was pretty easy to do on this paper. I didn't really have any issues. Um, and again, I didn't pre-treat it with anything. I've never colored on the type of paper, I guess, they use in like the Maria Trolley books, Hannah Carlson. This was my first attempt at any of that, so. And I knew it was going to get real tricky right up here because of the way the pink and the yellow would have to transition. So, and see here you can tell I got tired and sloppy and started just going over the leaves and saying, screw it, I'll fix it later. And <laughs> that was harder than I thought. Um, but, you know, that's the thing. As as y'all saw in like Tuesday's video too, you you're gonna you gonna learn and you're gonna make mistakes and you know the picture still turned out nice um and i just learned things that i'll do differently in the future so um so as soon as i saw this page and like me and and my fellow michelle lots of us michelle's out there on color tube and i love it um, didn't know a lot of michelle's when i was a kid growing up like i think there was one other michelle maybe two that I knew of in my school or at least in my grade and um, now that we're everywhere there's literally dozens of us um, oh and I did want to mention the um, I didn't use a ton of water when I would wipe so in between colors I would wipe the brush off on a paper towel to get any excess color off and um, I probably should have shown that part, but, um, I figured, you know, like you guys would probably figure that one out. Um, and when I did that, I would just go ahead and squeeze the brush a little bit to just go ahead and re-wet the brush. I didn't squeeze the brush very often. Um, the flow of water that came out of it naturally was enough for this paper. And I found is enough for the gelatos. They, they, um, when I did the Galaxy Fox picture and stuff, they they um transition really well to a watercolor uh format with very little water they're very easy to just spread around so that is one of the reasons they are quickly kind of becoming i love my watercolor pencils for details but for like backgrounds and bigger areas like this, I'm really starting to kind of embrace the gelatos. So you're probably going to be seeing those um, pretty frequently when I color. And they did great on this paper. I didn't have any kind of waving or anything on the paper. They didn't bleed through. So I was super happy. And, um, but no, when we decided on this page, I instantly kind of saw it um as a excuse me as a uh, tribute page for oreo um for those of you that are new first off welcome and and sorry for the downer here <laughs> but back in march we lost um our oldest cat oreo he was about 16 or 17 and um the the ultimate diagnosis, I thought, at first we thought it was kidney failure, but his kidney values are fine, and the, what we ultimately think happened is he's had a slow-growing brain tumor for a few years. That's probably what started his little focal seizures about two years ago, and it's been slow-growing, and it just got to the point where it was messing with his basic functions, so he w wasn't able to drink water. Um, he felt compelled to go to the water bowl, but he wouldn't drink, he wouldn't be able to drink water, he wouldn't eat, um, and he couldn't sleep there at the end, and, um, so it, it was really hard, it was hard on me, um, probably the, my husband loves all the cats, and I, you know, I know he hates to see any of them go, but 
I know Oreo was really hard for him too, um, because he was kind of a lap cap for both of us, and he was the first one of the ones to pass away like that. So here is the finished background, and you can kind of see the shimmer a little bit now. It's very pretty. The background came out so good. I was so happy with the background, and then then we started with the foreground and the details. And it was, it was last night. I was tired. It had been a long week. I was cranky anyway, <laughs> but I really wanted to work on the picture. And I was testing mediums in the back on the test page. And like the glitter gel pens would, would show through. Um, I noticed the dual metallic pens, they would kind of ghost a little, but they weren't as obvious. Water-based markers like the Tombows were fine as as long as I didn't try to blend them. Um, just one, you know, a straight color like this was was the best way to keep them um, from showing through. This is a double-sided book, and this is one of the reasons why I haven't been doing much of my double-sided books. Just because trying to use mixed media in a double-sided book is a pain in the ass and I'm just gonna say it and I'm sorry if I offend you with my foul language um but it's the truth it's more than a pain in the butt it's more than a pain in the tuchus it's more than a pain <laughs> in the rear end it, it was a pain in the it's a pain in the ass <laughs> Like, I mean, finding gel pens that won't bleed through, finding fine liners that won't bleed through, finding, you know, mar uh, of course, I knew no alcohol markers, and it was just, oh my gosh, and I had, I had this, there, you see where I magically colored the other page, too, uh, the other side with the Tombow marker. Now I'm coming in with my um, Devecle dual metallic gel pens, and at first I tried to use the Devecles because... They don't output as much as like the Pentel Sparkle Pop and the um, Pentel Dual Metallic. Um, and oh my gosh, y'all, gel pens on these gelatos do not work. And I got so, <laughs> so big mad, y'all. I ended up breaking a pen. I was so mad. Oh my gosh. Um, Ultimately, I end up going on to use the dual metallic ones because it's the only way the sheer output of pen that comes uh, of uh, color that comes out of those pens was the only way I could get um, some of the gel pen to cover, you know, actually get on the leaves and the plants and stuff in this picture. So let let my let my mess up um, be your lesson so you don't if if you use and I'm not sure if it's the case with all gelatos I'm possibly if you plan to use gel pen in a picture with gelatos be very careful about at least the iridescent gelatos be very careful not to get the gelato where you want to put the gel pen because it really does not want to cover it and Anyway, this was going to be a tribute page for Oreo, and it still is, and and really a tribute page for all my cats that have passed away. Just, just a remembrance of them, and just I look at this picture and I think, I think you know, one day, one day I'll see them again. One day we'll be together again. And that's that's what I saw when I looked at this picture. Um, and that's what I see now that the picture is complete. <laughs> but I, I was kind of bummed at myself because while the picture I colored for Annie um, last year was very therapeutic, this one was not therapeutic. <laughs> Don't try new things on pictures that you put a lot of personal meaning <laughs> into is, is another lesson. It should be an obvious lesson, but it wasn't for me. Um, the new stuff tried me out. The fact it was a new artist, did one of my precious double-sided books, uh, hardback books, my first hardback book color, 
Um, all that stressed me out. And like I said, my original plan was just like gel pen everything. And then when I figured out that wasn't going to work, I was having trouble finding, I just didn't want to use pencil on this. I, I don't know. It just didn't say pencil to me. I wanted to use some other stuff and um, obviously couldn't use my alcohol markers. So you can see here, yeah, we just went on, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> um, so here I am with another Tombow. Um, I didn't have too much issue with streaking, but water-based markers, I they do best for me in small spaces. Um, the smaller the space, the less they're gonna streak. Um, and if it's a darker color, it won't streak as much. Like, when I color her shirt later, you'll see I had a little bit of trouble with that. Um, but, um, it's still a tribute page. It's still a beautiful page. Um, and I do look at it, and you'll see why in, in a little bit, but I do look at it, and I see Oreo, and, and I think about all my other cats. And it's a good picture now, but it just was not the therapeutic picture I probably needed. <laughs> so definitely gonna have and and I may not be ready for that yet um subconsciously maybe I just wasn't ready to really process that just yet so but it still turns out great so um yeah like I said I don't have too much trouble with the water-based markers as long as I use them in small spaces I did think as I was doing this, I was like, you know, I may come in with a little bit of pencil over where I'm putting the Tombows, um, just to give it a little more dimension. And there I realized I uh, had forgotten that little space under her arm with the gelatos. But anyway, there we go there. Now, <laughs> we're just speeding right through this picture back to the um, gel pens. So yeah, the rest of this picture is just a combo of the gel pens and the Tombows. Um, the the dual metallic Devickle Pentel Sparkle Pop pens, they did really well. They didn't ghost on the other side of the page. Um, hardly at all. This dark purple I use here in a minute, it shows a little, but like if I color the other side, you won't be able to see it. So they actually performed better than I thought they would from the test page. So I was pleased about that. Um, just, I, I like my pencils when I'm in the mood for them, but I'm never going to be able to color in these books consistently if all I can use is pencils. So... This was a great page for me to do because it showed me once I figured it out, <laughs> once I got past being irritated, it showed me that I can do really pretty pages in these books and I don't necessarily need um, my colored pencils, which of course I want to do when using watercolor pencils as well, but they just, I just wasn't feeling them for this picture. They just, yeah. I was, I was feeling more just, and, and here's where I, I say, you can see right there where it gets thin, where the gelato came in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, this is why I didn't do that. Well, for, first off this, you know, this picture didn't really take as long as like a colored pencil picture would have, but it did. The background took me an hour, but I'm not familiar with gelatos. Um, super familiar with them. Uh, definitely hadn't used them like that before on paper. And I was nervous about the paper. And I was nervous about the picture. And I'm slow colorist anyway. So it all combined to take a really long time. When, you know, really it probably shouldn't have took that long. As I get more comfortable doing these, um, that will hopefully change. Boy, this blue-purple is where things really went went tits up y'all <laughs> I just shh, I was using I don't have this Devickle pen anymore by the way it is in the trash can <laughs> oh my gosh I just like right here 
right here this was taking so long and I kept scribbling outside on a different paper thinking that it was just getting clogged up from the gelato right and that wasn't it it just didn't want to go over where I would colored with the gelato and I it was this was such a pain in the ass right here I don't care I have no filter this morning I am just tired I slept horribly last night probably the worst I've slept in a month um but uh I get mad the pen goes bye bye and I pull out the dual metallic version of this color and let me tell you that that heavy uh flow from those pens they are the most expensive but boy when you need to cover up something those are the babies you want those are those are the ticket and um while and i was the point of if they bleed through they bleed through i don't care anymore <laughs> and they didn't they really didn't they, they're they're a little bit you can see them ghost just a little bit but they actually did better than i expected so you see how long this took and i'm only going to show you half this page Actually, the only reason y'all see half this page is because I stopped the video. I was just going to say, no video, we're done, and um, you'll come back and see it magically <laughs> change <laughs> to being fully colored, but that's how that went down, and after that, I, you know, it was late. The cats wanted to be fed. I had to give Maggie his fluids, and it just, I was being stubborn. I should have just walked away. And I just, I couldn't. I was being stubborn. It was my own fault. It wasn't anybody else's. I, I tend, I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself here these last few weeks. And it's not going, it's not going well for me. So, um, I'm, I'm getting some really neat pictures. But I am not getting any of the relaxation or anxiety reducing at part of my coloring. Right now, it's just project coloring, and that is not ideal long term. So, see, look, the other side got, <laughs> and that streakiness you saw got magically filled in. So, yes, if you're going to use, if you do paint with the gelatos and you cover a lot of space and you want to use gel pens, I would highly recommend using the du the Pentel dual metallic ones because they will definitely help cover your oopsies. So the rest of this is um, all these get filled in with Tombow. I'm checking because I was just, I just knew. I knew something was going to bleed through. And it didn't. It didn't. I really needed more self-confidence in this picture. And boy, is self-confidence lacking for me. Boom, we're done. Look at that. So quick. Um, well, the background was really what I wanted to feature for this one. So, um, and then here I am. I'm just using the Pentels. I was like, let's, yeah, we're good. And um, anyway, it's funny now. It's funny now as I look at it and laugh, but it wasn't funny last night. <laughs> oh, but see, that was my, I guess if you look at it that way that's kind of the my life with the cats you know some of it's wonderful and some of it turns out great and then some of it's just a big hassle and a big pain because that's just how how life goes with pets so um i guess it was a greater testament to um what my life is like with cats anyway is <laughs> sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad a lot of times things don't go the way you want them to but in the end it all works out and um so yeah i guess i guess that was my <laughs> that's going to be the positive takeaway i i tell myself for this one oh my gosh and when i put down the skin tone she looked orange and i really was just like okay she's orange so I know when I've done live streams, y'all are like, wait, you have lighter hair than that. Uh, yeah, that's highlights. <laughs> that's highlights to cover the gray. Um, when I was a kid, it was just really dark brown. And um, it's definitely not that way anymore. <sighs> I hit, 
the two week period after my second vaccination on Friday, I am so calling and making an appointments to get my hair cut and highlighted. I haven't done that in like a year and a half, y'all, and it's going to be awesome when it happens. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's funny, I really didn't know what I was going to talk about during this video, and it's mostly just been talking about the picture itself, which is fine. I know, I know sometimes it gets a little tedious hearing me talk about like well not tedious but just like incessantly talking about the drama and ongoing soap opera that is my life um well no it's not that interesting i this is no jerry springer by any means so you can see it streaks just a little bit right here. Um, I do come back through with the second layer. I didn't have any issue with peeling, um, just doing a second layer, so, which helped a little. And at the end, I got, I was really lazy, y'all. I was gonna try shading, and I was gonna try to use a watercolor pencil, and it just, even just instead of a regular colored pencil, because that's all I had, <laughs> I went right at my fingertips. It didn't really do much and I was like nope we're done we're done so here I am looking at reference photos for Oreo I didn't name him my ex's grandparents had named him because he was originally their cat and of course he had an Oreo on like a little black colored round Oreo like spot on his chest so actually really like how the cat turned out and I figured at the end, the black Tombow would be the thing that would bleed through, but it didn't. It didn't. In retrospect, I would have used, um, well, I'll talk about that at the end. I would use, I would have pre-treated the paper before I did this. Um, I was worried how it would do with the gel pen because sometimes it can leave a texture. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot a tail. But she had a little bit of white on the end. So I really like how the cat turned out in this one. So yeah, here's where I come with the... And like I said, I just used a watercolor pencil because I hadn't put those up yet. And I was feeling lazy. And that's probably why it didn't work as well. But I couldn't hardly see it on her. And I was, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. This is good enough. You don't have to put pencil on every picture, Michelle. So here we are. Yep. Uh, <laughs> you didn't really see it, per se, but no, the other side. Um, oh, and I completely forgot the bird at the end, so he became a bluebird. None of this, like I said, there was just a barely bit of ghosting from the dark blue-purple pen, but everything else did well. So I thought here I'd show you, like, that's how it looks without a whole bunch of you know, glaring from the, from the shiny. Um, the dual metallics do give you a kind of glittery effect, but you can see the iridescent of the gelatos. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh. That background and that cat are my favorite parts of this picture. Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to show y'all at the end, like what I can see. So, all right, so final thoughts on this picture. The iridescent gelatos are amazing. I love them. I Any of the gelatos, I think, are going to be my... The gelatos and probably the water-soluble type crayons are going to be my ticket to using these, getting into my more expensive books. Um, just, I, I will use pencil, but any time I can shorten, even if it's just using watercolor pencils first, then using regular colored pencils, any time I can shorten from using colored pencils um, will make me more likely to do these pages. I love how my the colored pencils look, and sometimes, sometimes I want a page I can slowly work on with just colored pencil, but if I just do that, I will never get to these books. Um, so, Finding these water-based mediums is really becoming kind of my ticket to 
doing other things other than just using my markers and colored pencils and I really like it. So gelatos in the Maria Trolle books when put on a palette and applied like that like a watercolor th two thumbs up does really well um, I do want to, and like I said I have not tried either of the other techniques in there using them dry or just putting them straight on the paper and activating them that way um, definitely ones to try in the future but if you want a nice kind of um, like in this case I wanted a really nice pastel -y, pretty background like that that's you know this was perfect so um, but <laughs> it may just be because they had the iridescent finish on them it may be just the gelatos themselves but highly recommend being careful with them if you plan to go back over them with well it could be anything um, the marker didn't the marker seemed to cover them up fine um, had trouble with gel pens don't know about pencils yet because I haven't tried them um, but trying to go over them with the gel pens was horrible and just like I said it took a heavy flow gel pen to make it happen which could lead to showing through on the other side so just be aware of that um, all in all what I would have done differently here is I would have used possibly um, a gesso or a clear gesso or satin glazing liquid on this before I would have colored it. It would have kept the gelatos wet longer. Um, if I want to do more kind of blending in the future that'll be the way to go. I was just worried about the texture it leaves behind and how that would act with the gel pen as well if that would cause issues this is the reason I didn't do it here but in the future because I want to use my my Arteza real brush pens more I want to use my Tombows and blend those more but I couldn't blend or use either the Arteza real bl brush pens bled through for me so I can't use either unless I treat the page so um, and I've had success doing that before but it was a long time ago so um, next page I'm gonna pre-treat and we'll see how that turns out but this turned out gorgeous like I said this is just you know this is a tribute page for Oreo and like I said when I look at it I think about him I think about you know Annie <laughs> it's a long list guys Annie Tiger Felix Cal um, Kyote uh, Betsy years ago, Mia, Zumi, Pepper, um, all, all my kitties that have passed. Um, just, it makes me think, you know, I'm going to see them again one day. And, and I truly believe that. And this picture just gives me hope. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you have a great weekend. I will be back tomorrow with my collection flip through. So um, thanks guys for watching and talk to you soon. Bye for now.